gotta get. How do you guys feel about the players being featured on the all-star team from your, your team? I mean, I'm excited for the opportunity for them. I mean, it's great exposure. You know, unfortunately, I think that, um, you know, a lot of people are getting wrapped up in the whole term all-star. Um, and they're forgetting that, you know, every team has a star um, that is integral to that team. And while that person may not be the top of the league overall for that particular team, um, it's imperative that that person be a part of it. And so I, you know, I think there's two mindsets when you think about all stars. Um, it's either a, a conglomerate of making sure that every team has that representation and has that person who's integral to them a part of it, or you go straight by stats. You know, and, and I think that if you um, if you look at, you know, all the representation that's going to happen next weekend, that you see those key players for every team or for a majority of the teams, you know, being active um, versus it's not just the top stats guys. Well, and depending on who you ask, the stats aren't even correct anyway, so. Well, and, and you know, and there's some argumentation to that. I mean, there's, you know, they do training, but, uh, you know, it's. They're not, they're not getting paid fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year to do this, you know, as a profession. Um, and, and a lot of people are just, you know, it's people who love the game um, and, and we're all human. Um, and so, yeah, to your point, Adam, you know, the stats are as accurate as the person who's reporting them and what their opinion is. Right, right. Well, I, I, think, I think no matter how you look, uh, the all-star game, um, it, it's 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 very subjective, right? Uh, every All Star game is, is going to be. It's not only based on stats. It's going to be based on what the coaches that represent East or West going to pick players to play for them. It's just how it is, and it's going to be on their coach eyes the best players that they think it is from the East and from the the West. People will agree, people will disagree, but uh, I think this the, this All Star game is a great opportunity. Uh, for a lot of people see a lot of the stars of MASL playing together. You know, it's going to be the, the level of the game is going to be great. Um, I think uh, it's going to be awesome to see, for example, uh, uh, um, you know, Max playing again, you know, with Ian, for example, like for the All-Star game, you're going to see uh, Vinny Dantas playing with uh, Nick Pereira, or you, or you see Frank, you know, like there is always these players that you want to watch and you want to watch together. That's why uh, it called All-Star Games. It's a bunch of stars playing together. So again, it's going to be, you know, it's very subjective. Like uh, people are going to have their own opinion, but it's based on the coaches and what they are thinking is the best at the moment to represent East and West. That's just how it is. Yeah. About like the NBA All-Star Games, for example, you know, like the people that go watch that. I watch NBA All-Star Games every year, you know. Uh, the least concern is the, is the, is the scoreboard, right? You, you want to see all these players playing together. You want to see the talent. You want to see them, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, LeBron James, like schooling someone, you know, like a, having a good combination. You want to see, the, that's the time that you're not going to just see the team, you're not going to root for any team. You're going to see the talent. You're going to see the players. You know, obviously, um, we have this common thing that we say in Brazil a lot that, you know, we could build about four or five national teams for soccer. We could every year. That is a, that is the World Cup selection. And then, like, uh, a lot of people say, well, what, are this, what about this guy? Well, what about this guy? Well, that is a lot of players. But you have to just put together, you know, what you think is the best. And always going to have some problems, you know, like uh, in a real world, like uh, when, you know, the COVID wasn't around, was injury, was a visa issue, it was, and now we also have to add COVID on it, all the restrictions and everything. So I, I think right now, um, you know, uh, um, uh, Lane, Brian, and Shelly doing a fantastic job to put this game together, to put this whole weekend together because we have the all-star game and we also have our game in St. Louis on Sunday. And, and I think like we've been missing soccer for too long. I think people uh, should not be
be so concerned about the little details and just enjoying the weekend of soccer that we're going to have. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's how we break it down. It's, it's something. And, and it's, it's something that we've been wanting for, well, geez, 20 years. And I've been harping on it for a couple of days now. Um, I've heard you mention it once or twice. Yeah. Once or twice, but <laughs> it's a work in progress. I mean, this is the start of something great. Now, next year, if it happens, maybe fan voting comes into play, maybe multi-point scoring. It's just, this is, this is the, the start of something great. And don't, I saw that, Gio. <laughs> multi-point scoring would be great in an all-star game, just the one game. So, so Shelly, let me, let me ask how, how this all came about. How what let's let's hear the whole story. How what came about? The whole all-star game, the whole, well, we'll talk about the Central Cup in a little while, but. Um, so I'll be honest, um, the all-star game really, um, we've had very little to do with it. Um, I think uh, credit needs to be given to Lane from Tacoma um, uh, and Bud from Kansas City. Uh, when it came down to it, those two guys, um, you know, more or less said, we know people are missing it. We know the players are missing it. Um, this is a, a great opportunity for us to provide something to, you know, kind of kickstart the season. And what it comes down to is, is those two guys came together and said, look, we'll take the entire financial risk and try and put this together. And we would love the league's support, um, you know, but the bottom line was they didn't ask for a single thing from any of the owners, except for that um, we consider allowing our, our players to participate. Um, and other than that, it's been a, can you guys, you know, share the social media post or can you help us promote the game? Um, you know, but other than that, those two guys deserve all the credit. And I think that there are so many people that are critical and lose sight of the fact that there's somebody on the line for this bill. Um, we're all in tough times right now. You know, people are, are struggling financially. There are also people who are doing very well because of the situation and, you know, the industry that they're in. Um, but those two guys alone are shouldering the burden. They're shouldering the burden of the travel, the liability, um, the testing. I mean, the, just the whole entire thing, the, the production, the ability to, you know, view the game, to be able to compensate the players. Um, they're, sh they're shouldering the whole thing. And um, all I can do is say, you know, thank you to them for taking that on because nobody else stepped up to do that. And I think that it is uh, a great opportunity for the fans to have something to get si excited about again. Um, and it's also given the guys, you know, the guys that are playing and training, it's given them something to look forward to as well. You know, and I think, um, you know, Matt, you mentioned the Central Cup. You know, this is just kind of a kickoff to that. Um, you know, and, and the bottom line is, you know, a lot of us, and especially those of us in the middle of the country, um, we have the ability to host games with fans. At least that's the rule today. And so for those of us who have that rule, we want to jump on it and take advantage of it while we can, because who knows what it's going to be in 30 days or in 60 days or, you know, three months from now. So those of us who can, who can play, it's really about, you know, starting to try and find some kind of normalcy back in our lives um, and, and give people something to look forward to. Speaking of supporting the league, keeping the league alive, how did you guys get into the, the Central Cup idea? Because I love it personally. I love to see that one recognition of old rivalries, ability to have play those games. It's it's great idea, but how did that start? Uh, so it really came about um, when, uh, you know, I don't know, probably three or four months ago, uh, you know, we started having league calls again, starting to discuss uh, where people were at, where we thought our arenas were going to be at, who thought they were going to be able to host fans, who wasn't going to be able to host fans. Um, obviously, there is um, some extreme disparity between East Coast and West Coast. And what we found was the people in the middle were all able to host, um, at least currently. And so it started to become a conversation of, look, we're used to starting the season at, you know, the middle of November. 
mm -hmm. um, end of November. And uh, our arenas had already provided us with dates. You know, we typically turn in dates to the league June, July, August. So we already had those dates. Um, and it came down to, okay, well, who's able to host? Uh, does it make sense to, you know, get a hold of Wichita? And, you know, they're only three hours away from Kansas City. You know, they're about six hours away from us. They're only five hours away from Dallas. Well, we can now all drive with the exception of, you know, Dallas coming to us, um, which is mm -hmm. still drivable, but it's, it's nine and a half, 10 hours. So it's really more of a flight, but we're both major hubs. So it made sense from a financial standpoint, um, you know, you have that game one time. So we kept it to a, a you know, a three game series. Uh, we're all playing each other one time. Uh, just all the dates just kind of fell into place. Um, and it became a, you know what? Nobody else can play in December. We can play in December. Let's figure out a way to make this work um, and give our guys something to look forward to and give our fans something to look forward to. Um, plus, like I said, you know, we know in December we're open. I don't know what that's going to look like in January. Right. Yeah. How do the, the guys feel, Everton? How do you guys, like your mentality going into this Central Cup? Oh, obviously, you know, the players are excited because – it, it, it's tough on the players, uh, you know. Uh, the entire pandemic is it's tough on everybody, <clears throat> obviously. Uh, but the players, uh, they know what they know, right? Uh, for six months out of the year, they are very active. You know, they practice, they go to the gym. Like, the entire life revolves around being in shape, you know, uh, play games. And some players play uh, indoor, but after the indoor, they play outdoor. And their entire world stopped you know, for, for a few months. So obviously the players, they are very excited for the opportunity to play in a Central Cup. I can speak for our players that, you know, they've been preparing themselves. We've been doing like a, some, you know, kick around every once in a while. Players like are, are doing, doing their fitness, their cardio, their, you know, ball work and everything. But, you know, they're very excited to, to, to play the Central Cup. I'm very excited because, you know, um, I'm going to be able to see um, you know, all the work that we put off season in terms of, you know, getting new players, you know, trying to, to continue to have our foundation of players, but add talent, add experience. And now we're going to have the opportunity uh, before the MSL season to start to evaluate that at the Central Cup, which is going to be good for us because we can make adjustments. We can, you know, uh, know if we are where we are, where we at, or, uh, or if we would like to uh, to change a couple of things. So for me, uh, I'm extremely excited for that, that opportunity. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so do you treat do you treat the Central Cup like? I mean, obviously the game on the on the sixth is going to be more exhibition than than playoff atmosphere. Where does the Central Cup live in there? Well, I mean, as as Shelly knows, I. I don't like to lose, <laughs> you know. None of us do. Come on. I've never seen that about you. <laughs> I I see every game as a playoff game, you know. Like you know, it does for me. It doesn't matter if it's an exhibition or it, it is a final. Uh, once you step in the field, you have to you have to play. You know, you have to leave everything you got in there. So, I think players should have the same you know set of mind. I think players should have the same. Uh, the same thoughts because um, every time you step on a field, your job's on the line. You know, if somebody else is better than you, guess what? Somebody else will play, not you. You know, if, if someone is coaching better than me, guess what? I love Shelly, but I know that she'll make the change because <laughs> it, it's professional, you know, like it's, it, that's how it is. You know, everybody, everybody's replaceable and every, everybody's uh, job is on the line. So players got to understand that. So it doesn't matter if it's an exhibition game. What if this is the is a championship game? Players have to perform. Right. So so my question to you is, will will we will you be watching the Central Cup from the bench or on the field? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm done playing, man. <laughs> I'm done. I think if I I think if I step on the field by any chance, I think Shelly might jump on the field and and it slapped me out of the field like in five seconds. <laughs> as long as we get that on video, I'm good with yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> Shelly's the one that have to hear the complaints. So every time that I step on the field to practice, next day, 
everything in my body hurts. And I'm like, oh, my back hurts. And she's like, well, stop playing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there were some interesting things that came up in that, in that Tozer uh, podcast as well. And one of them was uh, some of the rule uh, changes. And you were talking about, about doing some rule changes for the, the game when Tacoma's coming in. Um, I know you're talking about a goalkeeper change. Can you talk about some, some of the rule changes you're looking at for that game specifically? Um, well, I have a personal opinion about that, okay? Uh, <laughs> I, I've been in indoor soccer for, for a little bit, you know, and, and as the game progressed and as the league progressed, I do think that we have an um, enormous amount of talent in this league right now. However, we spend too long, too much of time in a defense half. And I personally don't like, that's me personally, Everton speaking. I would love to do anything to the game succeed, no matter if I'm the coach, player, or just an expectator. I want the game to be better. So one thing that I've been speaking for quite a while with other people as well, that has a lot of influence in the league is about the goalkeeper rule. You know, I don't think it's fair to have, um, you know, you guys come to watch the game and you guys see Paulo touching the ball in the first half, in the first quarter, more than Max Ferdinand will touch the entire game. I, I don't think that's fair. That is too much for me, a cat and mouse type of a game between goalkeeper and defenders. Then you can say, well, but, you know, the, goal, the, 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 the goalkeepers are trying to help the defenders, you know, in order to be successful in the game. And I was like, no, but that's not their job. That's my job. I'm the coach, right? So I have to be the one that give the tools to the defender to become better. And if they're not better, it's my job to get somebody else that can get it done. Because the game should be playing that attacking half. So <clears throat> with, it's a long answer, but everything that I oh. do is kind of like, a, you know, long. That's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, Take your time. <laughs> long time ago, I think it was nine, uh, 1998, 97, something like that. Uh, futsal um, did not have the rule with the goalkeeper and all of a sudden they changed the rule that a team could only have one ball per possession with the goalkeeper unless the ball crossed the half line so then it resets or you have any sort of uh, turnover or the ball is out of play okay so you reset well coaches in Brazil and in the world are very smart and realize that, okay, so it's good. Uh, I'm going to continue to play a flying goalkeeper system, right? But my goalkeeper is going to be in a defense half and my entire team is going to be in an attacking half. So whenever, you know, push comes to shot, that's about the goalkeeper, the ball going to go in a half. So the cat and mouse type of a game continued to be, but it was closer to the attacking half. The game became a little dynamic, not so much. Well, so FIFA came and said, all right, enough is enough. We're going to have one ball per possession for the goalkeeper. Done. Mm. If the goalkeeper really want to play, send the goalkeeper to the attacking half. <laughs> the game completely changed. It was more dynamic. It was nicer to watch. You were actually watching the players to solve problems opposed to just rely on a goalkeeper to be some sort of the problem solving. So players start to be better. The game started to be more dynamic. The, the game went from being watched a little bit to be on TV all the time, especially not so much in the United States, but especially like in North, uh, uh, South America, uh, Central America, and Europe, and Asia. Like the game, like it was a, a huge boom on that because of the game, the, the, the way, how the game changed, and how dynamic it was. <clears throat> I believe that in MASL, if we change the rule to similar or the same rule for the goalkeeper, we will see more action. We will see more goals. We will see, I want, look, Let's be honest in here. I don't need to change the rule. Paulo is fantastic with their feet, with his feet. He helps me a lot, but I'm not looking for the best interest of St. Louis Ambush. I'm looking for the best interest of the sport. Sure, yeah. I think Paulo would be much better off being attacking half and he's scoring goals. The guy can, can shoot, dude. Mm-hmm. You know, he scored goals for us. Oh, we've seen, but yeah. <laughs> I prefer to see my goalkeeper shooting, but also leaving the empty net because that can generate goal as well. And you guys don't go on a field. You guys don't go to the arena to see goalkeepers play. You, you see, you go to the arena 
to watch what is the happiest moment in soccer, which is goal, right? Scoring. So we are providing, with the game, uh, with the rule change would provide that. It would provide a little bit of more uh, uh, opportunity for goals, turnover, set pieces, and, and that's what people would like. So one is the goalkeeper rule. <clears throat> we also spoke about free kick rules. You know, we don't like this rotation of keeping, you know, kicking, you know, uh, Obasi or kicking Melo, you know, or kicking uh, Ian Bennett, you know, the career rotation. So I, I enable them to play. Well, if teams do that, they should be punished for that. So I believe in also having a, 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 an amount of fouls that you can commit per quarter. And after that should be punishments, like top the box, shootouts, or whatever the case may be. So the game is played. It's not so much like physical games. I like it. Don't get me wrong. I really do. I really like physical games, all right? But there's a limit for physical game and game being pretty to be played and watch to just be straight up violent and stupid, mm -hmm. right? So there is some games like that. Like, for example, I also don't like when everyone team score and the whole 128,000 people that is in the bench, like I get in the field to celebrate. <laughs> too many people in the field take too long to start the game. And that's why we're not on TV because it's too long, you know, like five guys celebrate, six guys with the goalkeeper. Do you guys want to celebrate your teammates? Bravo, go by the bench and then go back and play so we can keep the game going, you know? So I think little tweaks like that with the league, it will help the game to be more dynamic, speed up the time of the game, you know, go back to this two hours limit that, you know, like we need to be in order to be part of like a TV broadcast, whatever the case may be, whatever the, the, the league thinks the best. So I think all of that would help the game to be better. That's all. That's a very, that's my short version of the answer, by the way. So, so Nick, Nick has a really interesting question and I, I have a, a probably question. a much different answer than, than Everton. I think what well, you'll have an answer and even Shelly, what well, you'll have an answer for this. Um, he says, what defines a good season this year besides wins? Or this, this coming season, what defines a good season? It's on me or Shelly. Both. Right, you, go, you go first. Yeah, you go first. Um, <clears throat> defines a good season. I think like a, Obviously, a successful season is when you win, right? Yeah. Ultimately, we are in a competitive sport. So no matter how good your team is, if you don't win, you, you're garbage, right? That's, what people, that's how people see you, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I think uh, <clears throat> since I got to the ambush uh, three years ago, I'm going to go my, to my fourth year, I think every season we got better. Um, I strongly believe that if we didn't have last season the big fallout on the schedule, we would be fighting for the playoffs. Again, this is not an excuse, okay? Sure, oh yeah, Get me no. wrong. I'm hard on myself and on my team a lot, especially on myself, okay? I also believe if, you know, obviously, I don't even, I, I cannot even blame the league because that's not how you schedule things, you know, because you don't know how teams going to be until you play the teams. Right. Mm -hmm. So the schedule is very, is up in the air, but you got to understand that teams playing some teams much more than we did also had a huge way on us not being a playoffs. So again, I think we've been having successful teams, mm -hmm. like in terms of growing and then I find the core, but what defined me a successful season right now, first and foremost, is go to playoffs. That's a successful season. Because Everton, the question was, how do you determine with not counting wins? Oh yeah, well, <laughs> but he asked me, what well, defines a good cool. season this year besides winning? No, that is this no is why Shelly's a good listener. That is, no, that is no good season if you don't win. So for me, for, you know, for most is to make playoffs, you know, and then after playoffs is a whole season that is start over, you know. So for me, that's how you define, again, a successful season. If you're being successful or not, you know, you have to have your goals. You know, that's as a coach speaking. Short right. So I have, I, have, I have two things that help me uh, define a good season. Uh, the first one is, is did my players um, have growth? 
whether that means on the field um, for them maturity wise, um, you know, job opportunity wise, um, stability wise, that's the first thing. The second thing for me um, is for me to see on social media, all of the pictures of all of the families and the fun that they're having um, and that relationship and that family um, synergy, whatever you want to call it, that's how I determine whether or not it's good or not. Um, you know, there, <laughs> there have been several seasons um, where, you know, the ambush have been at one and 19, three and 19, um, you know, horrible records. And, you know, as, as an owner, when you are sitting there watching this happen to your team and, and you're facing, again, another loss and another loss and another loss, I have to sometimes quit looking at what's going on in the field and look at what's happening in the stands. Yep. Because those little kids who are happy to stand up and cheer and happy to do the dance cam and happy to do the flex cam and that's what it's about. Yep. When it when you're not looking at just the wins. Mm -hmm. That's that's where I find my joy and that's how I know if I'm being successful according to what my goals are. Which is to provide that family opportunity to get rid of the technology and and to communicate and, you know, talk to one another again. Yeah, I I completely agree. I I think and, and you saw that this year with Rochester. I mean, Rochester went one in whatever. Yeah, whatever it was, yeah. And their yeah. environment is dynamic, and people yeah. are having a blast. And yeah, yeah I mean, what what soccer <laughs> team is doing in that city? It's it's phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, question for Shelly. So this is a. Hopefully, this won't get, rub anyone the wrong way. This is Huffman, uh, our our new favorite defender, Milwaukee. Um, Question for Shelly here. Does look and he says, let me read the second half of this. He says, please don't take this the wrong way. Big fan. A lot of the players talk to say you're a great owner. But he says, is there, is there any talk of having? Does the league have any plans in legitimizing the player honors and awards? I wish there was an easy answer for that. Um, <laughs> in all honesty, you know, guys, this goes back to kind of the same thing with the rules. Um, you know, there's. There are several people that try to come up with, um, you know, systems. Um, you know, a couple years ago, it was um, the staff mm -hmm. and maybe some stats guys who put everything together. And there was, you know, an outcry of, hey, you know, the owners should really have a say in this. And so the owners were added. And then it was another outcry of, hey, the players should have a say in this. And so then the players were added to it. You know, the problem that I think that we find is that um, there is some pressure from within, um, I'm sure. You know, if you've got somebody who's nominated, um, you feel like if that person is on your team, what do you need to do? Right. Vote for them. Um, and so, you know, it, it's a question of, okay, well, you know, did 20 ambush players vote and only, you know, five um, Baltimore players voted. And so the reason the ambush player won was because more of their team engaged because they sent out the link and reminded everybody. And, you know, so honestly, I would love for there to be a, a finite answer to this. The system's definitely broken. Um, it can't just be stats driven because as you guys know, uh, we've already discussed you know, the stats are as good as the people that are putting the stats in and what they're seeing. Um, there's not really a good checks and balances. I don't know what the right answer is. Um, all I know is that I think the, the league tries to continue to improve upon the system, um, <laughs> if we can call it that. Um, but but here, here's the other thing, you know, and until you have somebody who is able to say, I'm going to step up and I'm going to analyze this and I'm going to pick it apart and I'm going to create a system and I'm going to present it and then we're going to have multiple meetings 
to discuss how this is going to work and you know you do your checks and balances until we have somebody who steps up for that um i i don't think that any of us honestly have the time to try and fix that when there's so many other things that we're trying to address yeah i i think from a fan standpoint um kind of addressing you and huff here the fact that you're an owner in the league on the owner's calls and committees and things and are saying you understand that the system is broken. I think that's, I think that's a legitimate step in the right direction. Like, Hey, we know it's broken, but we don't exactly know how to fix it. I I've always said, you know, I'm an IT guy. So I, I've grown up in the watching people destroy other people's systems um, and then lie about them and things like that. I always say, if you don't know something, there's nothing wrong in saying, I don't know. And I don't know how to fix it, but I'd like to try. And I think that's, I think that's what we would we really would really like to like to hear as fans. Um, the league just say, you know, I don't want to pick on them, but we don't want a Josh Shaw answer of, oh yeah, yeah, we're striving to make everything better and blah 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 blah. I, I, I like to hear it's broken and we don't really necessarily know what to do, but we're trying. Right. Question from Brad: How much interaction do the owners have with the commissioner? He seems more involved with baseball than the MSL. Ooh. I don't know if you um, want to so answer that. I- <laughs> Well, so I'm in a different position than the majority of the owners um, because I am on the executive committee. Um, I am the secretary for the league, um, which in essence, I make sure that all of the notes are accurate. Um, I keep track of tasks that we're supposed to be working on. So my involvement um, with with Josh is is significant. Um, We're in touch probably every few days. especially during the season and the off season, it, it's less frequent just based on tasks needed. Um, but um, I know that he's in contact with uh, Lane from Tacoma, who's, who's the president um, of, of, uh, of the ownership group in, in the league. Um, he's in contact with him constantly. So um, I think that most people are unaware of all of the things that happen in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that people have, um, a feeling of, uh, the sounds rude and I don't mean it to come across this way, but, a, a, of entitlement. And, um, there are some things that just don't need to be known. Um, and especially while we work on things, um, if you guys knew all of the conversations that are, you know, had that lead up to things, I mean, there are disagreements you know, across the board all the time. And if we were to air all of that, it would upset everybody. (laughs) But when it comes down to it, the ownership, all the owners come together. And again, regardless of if we believe or or don't believe whatever the decision is, we all agree to support it. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that, you know, a lot of that background work isn't seen, it isn't heard, it isn't talked about, and it really doesn't need to be. So while it may seem like he's not very engaged, um, I can tell you that there's not a day that I text him where he doesn't reply. Sure. Oh. It was just, just kind of a plea from the fans. We don't see him very often. Sure. Um, and this last season? Need to. No, no. So, so I think where some fans might feel a little touchy about is if you go look on his Twitter, I know this is stupid, but if you go look on his Twitter, it's literally all baseball. And it feels like on the surface in depth like you said there's things we don't see on the surface it's baseball Mm -hmm. so when when your commissioner is consistently representing a different sport you start to feel you develop a feeling like oh he doesn't care he's just like everyone else who isn't but i'm I'm gonna play devil's advocate i literally sent him a message on twitter and I said, hey, do you want to come on the show? Mm-hmm. We had talked about this. Yep. Instantaneously, I got a response from him saying, yep. yeah, absolutely. And I thought we had a really good discussion when he was on. It was great. Um, it was I just, great so, a couple of seasons ago when he first came in, he would be on uh, almost a game every week during the halftime show or you know, podcasts and things like that. And I think last season he was on one MASL primetime and one podcast, and that was all we saw of him. Um, so just Next time you think about, you know, and, and further into the season, just the fans would like to hear more, I think is the the, the main feedback. 
Um, I mean, I'm I'm sure I'm sure we'll we'll see him. I'm sure we'll see him too. Yeah. And it's not that we need to know like the the depth of what actually is going on in the background because yeah. fans do not need to be involved in that at any measure of the imagination. But just seeing him represent art personally, I have I have a a thing about that. And it's like I would just like him to come out and like put his brand out that he represent a little bit more. I get that he has baseball. He please do represent baseball. You need to because you're also a commissioner there. But just to see our commissioner represent our brand a little bit more just kind of shows where we are and where we should be. Just my two cents. My Geo's two cents. <laughs> Geo's two cents. I just made a note. Oh, I'm there we go. Uh, I'll follow up on it. Look at her. Geo's two cents sponsored by yeah. Steve. Everybody get up, everybody get down. Everybody dance to the rhythm. We're gonna ride in the rhythm. Everybody dance to the rhythm. Everybody get up, everybody get down. Everybody dance to the rhythm. Everybody get up, everybody get down. Everybody dance to the rhythm. Everybody get up, everybody get down. Everybody dance to the rhythm. Everyb